Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the gold chart, the daily chart, and you can see we've got the MACD down at the bottom. This is the one that we were watching closely because we had crossed over to the positive, got a confirmation, looked like we were going to rally. The silver had not done so, but now if we go over to silver we can see that uh, we now have that crossover not nearly as strong as a crossover in gold, but you can see that silver has pretty much recovered about 50% of that uh, drop from that $25 price. So it looks like it's on the way back up. Now, out to the weekly, we know we're still quite a bit below the zero line, and uh, we're expecting that explosive move to occur when the zero line is crossed uh, the trend is projecting something like that but perhaps if we get across we may get something like that no one knows for sure no one can predict the future and certainly no one knows the machinations of the criminal bankster so we can't say for certain but it does look very positive of course the news was the uh, shut down having its uh, effect supposedly at least this is going to be the spin they're going to use you can see the jobs number that came out and the headline is tepid US job growth supports feds cautious stance so now the feds got a free pass to not go into any tapering of course we knew there wasn't going to be any uh, ever at all anyway but now they have a pass and you can see here there's a little bit of hinting of the shutdown. Now we know that the shutdown was blamed on Republicans. Uh, we have just a few of them. Uh, the ones that are in the headlines, there's Cruz and then there's Rubio and they have these token conservatives who really aren't conservatives anyway. I think it was Cruz, I, I can't say for sure whose wife works for Goldman Sachs that came out today but anyway so this is all theater uh, everyone that is a conservative is really just a pretend and fake conservative but you can see here that we have uh, the employment report was released more than two weeks later than originally scheduled because of the government shutdown that ended last Wednesday with the extent of the economic damage from the fiscal cliff standoff unclear, the Fed will likely hold off on any decision on scaling back its stimulus. So you can see the whole thing was theater from the very beginning. They have to have their fake opponents on the right. We know there aren't any opponents on the right. Right being, when I use that term, uh, meaning not necessarily conservative but those who are opposed to the growth of government you have to remember that the press and the media and the universities and everyone else wants you to believe that you have this spectrum of of fascism on the far right and communism on the far left and they're polar opposites but they're not opposites they're actually very very similar in that they believe in very very powerful governments so the true spectrum you need to always keep an eye on is uh, those who believe in small government and those who believe in big government so all the politicians that we have in both parties believe in growing the government and what we just recently observed was a charade so that they, they could come up with a reason to grow the government more and that's exactly what they did so now they have an excuse now they can blame the Tea Party for uh, damaging the economy they have an out and of course uh, with this story here shutdown causes the IRS to delay tax filing season uh, here's more fallout from the government's partial shutdown early tax filers will have to wait an extra week or two to get their tax refunds next year so there's another punishment don't you dare ever question the growth of government or you may not get your money now anybody who really understands how these people operate probably wants to adjust their income their withholdings etc uh, I know I do that that uh, I'm not 
I never expect a refund. I always pay money to the government because you never know when that refund just isn't going to get paid. We've had many years in the past where they've announced a delay, they've announced uh, whatever. So you're always better off owing them money than having them owe you money. Now, let's go over to the debt to the penny history here. And I've pulled it from the last day of August in 2012. Now, you all know that the fiscal year for the government ends at the end of September. So traditionally, we've seen the debt or the debt ceiling kind of hover at that cap around uh, that time of year. And you can see here through September of 2012, we had that roughly 16 trillion number and it just hung there. And you can see on the 1st of October of 2012, you can see that jump. It took the jump the 28th a little bit about 50 billion that took a big jump about a hundred billion and then it uh, stayed there for a while and then it and it started its rise now it wasn't too long uh, it was in the spring that it hit that cap which is around 16 7 something that's the cap that we held up for the longest time but then that cap was actually breached you can see in April it went to 16.8, 16.8, and then it was about uh, late April or so. Supposedly, all these tax revenues came in. That's what the government said, that we came back down. Uh, and in May here, we adjusted to the 16.737, 16.738. And you can see that's the number they settled on. That's, that's the one where they started their funny accounting. And we stayed at that 16.738 all the way up. Now, normally, that number would jump October 1st, but it didn't. It was capped at 16,747. It stayed that way until we got this resolution. You can see on the 17th of October, we got the big jump to 17 billion. That's uh, almost $300 billion. And now, interestingly, we're kind of capped there. So at least they're still reporting the numbers the latest number that we have is the 21st so they're still reporting the numbers there are some missing days in the sequence but with the shutdown theater and uh, the raising of the debt ceiling we're going to watch this very very closely now if you haven't seen the article that i wrote today I, it's called obamacare rubicon i i highly suggest you read it I'm somebody who works in high-tech business, so this is the type of thing that we see all the time, that uh, the people at the top make a decision, they say, make it so, they pass that decision down, and of course, in a dysfunctional environment, in a good environment, in a good company, if somebody at the top of Google or Microsoft or one of those a uh, high-tech company that's run by the techs makes a decision and says we're going to roll this out and we're going to sell this product we're going to do this then uh, somebody in number two's position would say let me consult one of the engineers they call up and the engineer would say no we can't do that that doesn't work or that's not possible or we have to do it this way and they immediately tell them no it's not going to work so they get that feedback and that's how that's how software works good software has value because it represents collective feedback. Now, the Obamacare site was a, is and was a colossal failure, a colossal failure that is so embarrassing for Obama. Uh, I, I mean, this is just almost too hard to believe. We've pinned this at the top of the blog, but there's this Obama saving this fainting lady and uh, this, this video argues that it's actually a staged act. You'll have to go to the blog and review it for yourself, but it's it's really incredible that uh, the leadership failure in this administration. And the main point of this 
is that when you see that type of leadership failure, when you see a colossal failure that can't be blamed on anyone, that is the signature of an organization that is ruled by fear. People are afraid to question. They're afraid to give any feedback. They're afraid to do anything because anybody who opposes the uh, dear leader, they're just done away with. So this is how you get this type of colossal failure. It's my prediction, and I said in this article, that this is actually a Rubicon for the Democrats. The Democrats, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a Republican by any means, but the Democrats are in charge. This is the first thing they've really done except for blame the other party, and this is an absolute disaster. So it's very important to watch this because this has a lot of psychological impact on people. If this thing is a failure, as uh, Charles Biederman has pointed out on tonight's video, if this is a colossal failure and has to be redone and we wasted 600 or 700 billion dollars, this should be absolute proof to everyone who has seen what has happened that the government is simply incapable of doing things correctly. It's too corrupt. It's too bloated. The only answer is to shrink the government. There is no other answer. So let's get back to the charts here. I wanted to jump over to the Chinese Yuan because that's the one index that nobody really watches. Now that's a managed currency so it trades within the bands that they establish but you can see here as I pointed out on a number of charts that the currency has fallen right in this trend line it's still going down you can see we have a rolling over of the MACD and my prediction has always been that the dollar will eventually reach a one-to-one -one value against the Chinese currency now that's not something that's contained in the US dollar basket although you can see that the US dollar basket is also dramatically rolling over and with good reason because with the news out today uh, the Fed has been given a pass for any tapering we have Janet Yellen coming in we have an admission that the economy isn't doing so good they have a convenient scapegoat they have the uh, shutdown the 15 days of shutdown where they really didn't shut anything down they just pretended to be shut down they actually spent more money during the shutdown than they would have if they would have just stayed open so it was a fake shutdown but now they've got something to blame their failure on and of course they've got people like Ted Cruz and Mario Rubio and fake conservatives these are paid actors essentially who are pretending to be small government people there really are no small government people anywhere in politics you have big government left and big government right and pretty much it's a battle between how much money the left can spend for social welfare and the other side is how much the right can spend for wars and foreign aid so uh, that's the charade that's the theater that we have but nevertheless the silver price looks like it's rallying we're watching very closely the zero line on the MACD because that's going to be a very important inflection point to see if we can get above that $25 price and to break through the $26 price and then turn this around into a resumed bull market something similar to what we had back in 2008 and we'll talk to you next time